into the final half hour of our coronavirus day long. Coronavirus too. That's right. <laughs> Hopefully not for you. Um, it's good to remember the main principles for all of our meditation, especially these four Brahma Viharas is awareness that's bright and a, a kindness that's, that's warm. <clears throat> we bring that to all of our practice. So just summarizing the four Brahma Viharas that we've been talking about today. And remembering that these are things which we can practice all of the time and that according to some analysis of mental states that every wholesome mental state is comprised of at least one of these Brahma Viharas. So while listening, while speaking, all the time we can practice these. I've been in Seattle now for about a month and I've been very touched uh, by the generosity of uh, resources, generosity of food, generosity of shelter, uh, generosity of clothing. I've been wearing a very nice person's shoes, uh, two different people's shoes over the past. Uh, wasn't expecting it to snow as much, so uh, been a beneficiary of that, but also people's kindness uh, in many, many ways. Um, so the first Brahma Vihara, the, the first divine abiding, the uh, first of the mature emotions, which are boundless, loving kindness. This is something which I've really seen and which anybody can see on alms round. So Tanisabo and I uh, go into Pike Place Market. So I've been going every day that I've, every weekday that I've been here. And that's just an abundant uh, source of seeing people's loving kindness manifested through generosity. People, yeah, wake up early to uh, start making food, start cooking the, boiling the squash and cooking the rice and slicing the sandwiches and putting together the homemade apple butter, etc. And the whole process uh, is a practice of metta can be a practice of metta from when people are making the food to when they're offering it. And when I receive it, it it's, uh, yeah, you see the brightness of, of this particular divine abiding, like uh, the word deva, which means it's another word for uh, heavenly beings. Uh, it basically means the ones who are radiant. And you see this, you see the radiance, you see the yeah, almost divine, uh, shimmer of people when when they offer alms and you can see this you don't even have to offer alms yourself I mean I'm not I'm receiving all the alms so I'm basically just a witness to all of this and um, it's very touching and very noticeable and if you've ever if you ever come out to Pike Place 710 to 740 every weekday uh, you can see it as well you can participate if you want um, and it's, it's really beautiful. And I'd forgotten that living at university, I haven't been able to go on alms round in the same way. And uh, it's, it's a, uh, you could say it, it's, a, it, it's a magical experience in certain ways. The second Brahma Vihara, you have compassion. This is something which uh, you see in other ways. So we've got our Wednesday night groups and um, yeah, uh, we do a YouTube talk. And then afterwards we have a Zoom session and people really open up on things. and people are oftentimes going through some really, really tough times and some really dark places. And yeah, you know, when we were talking about compassion, Karuna Bhavana this morning uh, talked about, you know, how to practice Karuna when someone is being uh, aversive and offensive and even angry towards you. But you can also practice Karuna when, uh, yeah, rather than, you know, people coming and uh, trying to dig up the earth with a shovel or, spitting on the earth to deface it. Another way that compassion can manifest is people's tears. Yeah, people come and just cry on the earth. And when the heart is um, yeah, inclining towards the, the breadth and the spaciousness of, of compassion, um, yeah, we can receive that. And it, it's not just 
the monks who are practicing that on, on some of these calls with people really opening their hearts up. Um, everybody in the calls, you can, you can sense the, the quietness and the stillness of people really trying to, to practice that uh, uh, karuna and the anukampam, the, the trembling along with. So just the resonance um, that you feel in, in, in these interactions. Mudita, the third divine abiding. One way I've, I've seen that uh, really in an exciting way is on in the Saturday gatherings, uh, we get together at St. Mark's. I've been at two or maybe two of those so far, two or three. And it's great getting to meet people who are just really excited about Dhamma. And um, yeah, there's one particular Thai woman who sits in the front to our right. And spoiler alert, it's Juanita. <laughs> and she's just, uh, anytime she shares, it's just uh, an upwelling of, um, yeah, you can delight along with, uh, along with her uh, Dhamma reflections and um, yeah, it's it's really easy to delight in other people delighting in the Dhamma, and and you can feel that and experience the the upwelling and the the brightness. I I certainly have, and it's it's great. And I love meeting people who really love the Dhamma and met a lot of people like that in this trip. Uh, and finally, equanimity. I mean, basically, that's what that's what that's kind of our job as monks, you know, one of them, I mean, we're supposed to be practicing all four, but for the most part, you know, our interaction with society is most days, except for Saturdays, when we go into town, um, we leave our huts here. Uh, we're in Port Orchard, Southworth. We leave our huts at 6 a.m. Uh, maybe first encounter people at the ferry at 6.20, 6.15, then go to Alms, come back, we're back around uh, 8 45 and then we don't see anybody else basically for the rest of the day and we're just at our huts and that's equanimity practice basically just um yeah and it's it's a gift that um we've been provided we've got these huts so right now it's cold outside it's probably not freezing but it's definitely cold but we're not trembling and freezing our monk yeah, we're not, we're, not, we're not freezing right now. We're well looked after in, in huts with, with heating and uh, um, yeah, really well looked after and can have that the equanimity in mind because again, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you know, we didn't have, if we weren't being looked after so well on the physical realm with shelter and, and clothing and whatnot, uh, you know, equanimity becomes all the more difficult. Um, so just much appreciation to everybody who I've met so far in person, those people who I've met online, hope to meet all of you soon. And uh, thank you all for joining in today. We've had uh, numbers fluctuating and up to maybe 50 at some points, plus another 20 or 30 on YouTube. And uh, it's very heartening. So hopefully everybody has uh, been uplifted today with practice of the divine abidings. Um, we will, in just a moment, we will open things up to let people share, but as kind of a transition to that, and as a expression of appreciation and uh, recollection of these four divine abidings, Tanisabo and I will uh, chant the suffusion with the divine abidings uh, in Pali, and people can uh, yeah follow along if you're so inclined. Meta sahagate na cheta sahe kandi sankaritava viharati tata jutiyang tata tatiyang tata chaturta iti udamado tiriyang sabadi sabata taya saba Vantang loka meta sahagate na cheta sa vipule na mahagate na apamane na avere na avaya pajena paritava 
So you can bring to mind, just with the goodness of this retreat, um, anyone who you know who is suffering or otherwise that you want to dedicate the merit to, which is not some sort of esoteric economy, but rather just thinking of them and uh, sort of inviting them to rejoice uh, in this and changing your relationship to their recollection and their memory to one of brightness. So you can bring to mind someone like that if you'd like. Before we do finishing announcements, we wanted to give a, the community just a chance to speak for a time, maybe 15 minutes, uh, where you can sort of say, um, just a bit about what this, um, you know, either this retreat, the practice or Clear Mountain and this community that's forming has meant to you and um, your hopes for it as well, um, just briefly, um, or, you know, how it's affected to you. Um, I think it'd be useful to have that sort of sharing space here. Um, so I'm just gonna open it to that. If you raise your hand virtually, uh, then we'll call on you. Um, and if you type in uh, something to the chat, then we can also read that out loud. So please feel free. Juanita. Good evening, everybody. I'm so grateful to, to follow this Tanachan, both Tanachan and um, my husband and I, he's retired and we moved back from Japan and and I really looking for the the community because living away from Thailand is very hard for, and when I found out it's so nice and general and serious practitioner here, I so grateful and I hope everyone can join and support this community and hopefully that we can have this monastery soon and so grateful and so appreciate both Tanajan, Kovilo and Tanisapo to um to guide us and lead us and show us and and inspire us to practice 
I so grateful and so happy to find this community. Satu, satu, satu. Thank you, Maya. I'm really glad. David. Yes, turn on mute there. I just want to thank you both and everybody here for this day. It was really, I think the thing that I love about this is really the, sinc the sincerity and the depth of practice for, with everybody that's here. And then also like on the talks, like just the things that the Brahma Viharas have a special place in my life and my practice in my heart. And then to hear just ex it's like tying it back to the heart and bring it into really bringing some light in like through this because it's difficult right now in so many ways and this really is a bright spot and i just um want to express that gratitude and appreciation so thank you Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Oh, sorry. sophia oh sorry i muted you <laughs> Um, I realized while looking at my journal this morning that um, on this day a year ago was when I first started meditating and I thought it was a really sweet coincidence that the retreat was today and um, just really grateful to have a group to practice with. The first six months I was um, on a solo cross-country road trip and I was meditating alone sometimes in a tent and it's really nice now to have found this community in the past few months since I came back to Seattle to um, have guidance and um, it always is really um, special on Saturday mornings to have a, a physical group to meet with and um, I was really nervous about the in-person event today being canceled because in September it was so transformative um but it's been a really beautiful day so thank you so much for showing up even though you're sick and i hope you feel better soon thank you thank you sophia you we can add subtitles to this retreat in future years sophia's dharma birthday retreat and we'll try to hold it on january 8th perhaps <laughs> so There's a um, comment in the Zoom comments. This is my first real-time Clear Mountain event. Thank you so much for teaching and for the questions, all the questions. Greetings from Vancouver, BC. I hope we can forge a transnational Clear Mountain community. <laughs> Agreed, yes. Sujata. I think you have to unmute yourself, Sujata. Oh, she did it. Oh, you just muted her. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Well, where'd you go? Oh, Sujata, I think you got to unmute yourself. Yeah, there you go. You're good. I was just trying to unraise my hand and I did something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I am so happy to see everybody here. And thank you, Venerables. I mean, to have a day of such rich Dhamma, deep Dhamma, is just um, such a gift. And I'm just so grateful for that gift. Um, I'm really, uh, I went to the church this morning just to make sure nobody was going there. <laughs> and nobody went. So I was really <laughs> happy that I was so worried, like somebody's going to come so far out of their way and then be surprised. But everyone got the word, so that was great. Um, I'm, uh, I think for me, the equanimity um, was, you know, I think the most eye opening for me today because I hold. I hold some family members in equanimity because I can't get to compassion and I can't, I certainly can't get to loving kindness. <laughs> and, and it does kind of, it loses that heart feel. And so holding them in my heart more felt so much better. So, so much um, to be more gentle with them and, and hold them. Um, and not just a meh state, you know, or just like, uh, for, like, 
lazy sort of. So that felt really good. And it felt hopeful that maybe I will with that holding them in that way, I can maybe get more to compassion or meta. So thank you for that. And I, I think I just want to echo the same thing I said last year too. It's just, I think it's amazing your support for women and and to have this uh, bikuni come along too. And just so grateful for that. And um, hope that, you know, as far as going forward that we can continue discussing and um, participating more, even us as women in the, in the um, community to learn more and um, help more with uh, this landscape of incorporating women into the into our practice both both practitioners lay practitioners and bikunis so thank you thank you sujata yeah and and that's um a good uh we'll announce again but yeah tomorrow we're also i santusica will be joining us for the 10 a.m to noon event um she's an amazing teacher and guide so um and i'm sure there'll be room to talk about these issues a bit there and then um i think possibly at one of the Saturday gatherings uh, in about two weeks on the 22nd, Sujata, or is it the 22nd? Am I getting that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. After the Saturday gathering um, in person on St. Mark's, we may have sort of a, uh, a time to discuss specifically um, women's issues in the Sangha, et cetera, from about 11.30 till 1, uh, 12.30 PM that, uh, that day. So yeah, uh, this is, I, I think, a really important that. aspect. So thank you. Yeah. yeah, I hope people come. I think it'll be a really great discussion of women's questions that we have about um, bikunis and about our song and how that's going to fit in or things like that and how we feel um, our experiences, um, I think, and, and men are invited to so we can and we can and the discussion to talking about where we would like to go forward if we want to meet regularly about these things or how and so yeah you're all invited are we going to do it online too um we'll see i mean our capacity for wi-fi is not as good but we may be able to hook up a zoom thing so okay. yeah we'll send out something on the newsletter well, with more details around that if people stay tuned yeah thank you Alison Shaw, would you like to unmute? Oh, I, I want to thank you, Venerables. It was wonderful. The community is wonderful. It's, it's lovely to have such in-depth teachings. Um, really great. And I also want to echo what Sujata just said. It was really wonderful having Aya Susananda come and, and talk and see her enthusiasm. Really, really wonderful. So um, thank you so much for making women um, nuns a part of this. And yes, please keep doing that. It, it means a lot to those of us Thank you. And I, I, I know that's been, um, yeah, we, this has not been a discussion which been, has been happening um, very much in, in some of the circles that um, I think there's a place for this discussion and for this, uh, you know, whole uh, realm to really um, be opened a bit. So I, I really hope we can provide that. And it's, um, yeah, a real pleasure for us too to have uh, Aya Chitanand and the others, um, Bikuni's zooming in. It's uh, they're very good friends of ours, so I'm glad to hear that. You know, just read a quick uh, note from Sherry. So, also grateful for this online community and the clear teachings. I've been practicing alone for years, and today I joined in thanks to the posting of Zoom information on YouTube. So I look forward to doing this again online. Love from Canada. Uh, the Canadians. <laughs> and Holly, if you'd like to. Might be our last me. one.
Uh, Holly, I think you, oh, there you go. Okay. Well, this was quite lovely. Uh, I really like the slide acronym for dealing with unwanted thoughts. Cool. Oh, that was really nice. <laughs> I was taking notes from the notes of my phone so I could remember that. I uh, also really uh, I have a question about the story about the uh, grocery shopping and bumping into a, a, a person bumping into you and spilling all your groceries on the floor and then you realize they're blind and we're all kind of like bumping around in life. Would that be us being the blind person or us being the grocery shopper? We're all both. <laughs> but was we're, all, we're all wandering around in ignorance except a few arahats um, mixed in <laughs> who are the ones who actually can see. So well, was having a, some sympathy for all of ourselves, I think, is good. That was a great analogy. I see that in my life uh, a lot. Social fumbles. <laughs> was it their fumble or was it my fumble? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> so I had an interesting day because i part of this Keys to Awakening class that Aya Santusika has been doing since the fall using the Terry Gata to explore those things. And it was from uh, two to four. And so I exited and, and enjoyed that, which was just a, with East Bay Dhamma, and it was just a, such a heartfelt group. And then I came back here and I, my experience was that it was pretty seamless, little gender change, but that was the only thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, similar, different, but a lot of heart from all of you. Uh, I, Venerable Kovalo and Nisabo, a lot of heart from Chittananda and Santusika. And so that sense that it was a hmm, really good pairing of the two communities means a whole lot to me and just fills me with hopefulness and optimism for the future of the fourfold Sangha manifesting in my community, in my part of the world. So thank you. Always talking. Okay, so I think that might be the time we have. Um, one final comment in the chat. My connection has not been consistent, so I am refraining from raising my hand, but thank you so much for this day. My heart is so full. All right. So um, before we uh, do final announcements, uh, really quickly, I think that um, we have a brief announcement from Allison Thomas. Is that okay, Allison? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for today. Just uh, everyone joining up and being flexible um, with the last minute change. And of course, to Ajahn Kobilo and Tani Sapo and Aya Chitananda, just really beautiful day. Um, uh, just wanted to say that although we weren't at Fauntleroy Church, um, they did open up their space to us uh, for today. And if you, we'd like to still try and honor that. And we do have a link to Fauntleroy Church's uh, website on claremountainmonastery.org if you're inclined to um, go there and just uh, donate. And if you do, if you could just reference Clear Mountain Monastery, that would be wonderful. Um, but they're the same host who had us back in August. And um, it's just been a really beautiful friendship that I think is um, evolving. So I uh, just want to show our appreciation. And um, again, uh, the website, claremountainmonastery.org. If you want to, um, if you haven't done so already and feel inclined to, please feel free to go there and sign up for the newsletter. And um, as well as if you would like to donate but truly your biggest contribution would be joining us on Saturdays uh, to practice. We're just so grateful for this community that's developing and um, it's quite, it's, it's always a quite um, a joyful adventure on Saturdays. Um, it, uh, it brings a lot of joy to my heart. <laughs> so I hope to see you all there. Thank you, Ajahn Kovilo. Thank you, Tan Sipo. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Okay, so yeah, um, 
Allison, Thomas, and Dave are just right back there. We're living in their backyard, so many thanks to them. Allison was also the retreat manager for this retreat, so arranged the meal, the signs, the stirring six for the coffee, <laughs> which we didn't get to use, but they're there for the next time, so all is well. Um, thank you, Allison. Uh, Sujata also was deeply involved in many ways, um, prepping countless things, waiting this morning in the cold for people to stumble across them. Uh, Charles drove, you know, a decent distance. Um, Steve was involved. Uh, Allison Shaw was set to bring books. Many people um, were involved in a lot of ways. Um, and yeah, so just really appreciated all that and want to have everyone um, give a big sadhu to everyone who was helpful in, in all these ways. So, sadhu, 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 anumodami. And I have posted a link to um, the tomorrow's event for those who want to join via Zoom. It'll start at 10 a.m. until noon. It's the Claremont Envisioning Meeting, where we're just going to talk about our hopes for this project going forward. And just to give a brief preview, um, Clear Mountain Monastery is currently uh, us in a hut um, and a website. Two huts. Two huts. Um, and uh, the idea, though, is Ajahn Kovilo is currently at Dharma Realm Buddhist University most of the time, but will be up here for summers and winters until he's finished in a little bit. Spring 24. Spring 24, in <laughs> which case, hopefully, he'll come stay long term. Um, and you know, the idea is um, just to continue to live um, simply as we're able, uh, going for alms, having the Saturday gatherings uh, every Saturday on St. Mark's um, on Capitol Hill, and uh, all the details for those things and ways you can get involved, the newsletter are all on our website. Eventually, if land is offered, um, we would hope to short to midterm have a few huts where we host monastics um, and uh, maybe two or three monks. And uh, eventually we'd love to have space for lay stewards to stay and people to come for retreat, all free of charge, just a real Dharma refuge, um, completely supported by generosity. And um, yeah, that's sort of one of the hopes. Um, and uh, let's see, Allison, yes, leave your hand up, please. Yes, sorry. Um, I just wanted to mention Kim, who was also um, oh. just going to bring blankets and to keep us all warm and coffee and tea. Um, just don't want to forget Kim. <laughs> you, I'm sorry, Kim, definitely. And also <laughs> Rachel and Joseph, who opened up their, the space for Rebel Saints as well. Yes, um, they were going to bring- That was on me to announce. You're, you're good, Allison. <laughs> so, um, and Steve, who was going to organize the whole uh, like Zoom session there as well. And Dennis. And Dennis, who's gonna do AV, yes. <laughs> Allison, anyone else? All right, all right, good, we got it. <laughs> and there's plenty others who have been helpful. Um, just to uh, finish up then, um, gosh, I think, yeah, and, and yes, please, the best thing you can do to contribute to this whole project is just to keep practicing tune in as you're able and, you know, devote yourself to this path as much as you can. The world needs a lot of goodness right now. So we're hopeful we can all bring that. Um, for those who want to come to Saturday's gathering next week, we'll uh, probably be holding it. Um, I think I'll send out an announcement if we're not. Um, it'll be at the, not in Blodell Hall. We have a new alternate space, not the old one, which was small and very cold, but it's on the opposite side of the parking lot to the north in something called the Gage Academy Skinner Auditorium. So if you go to St. Mark's Saturday morning at 9.30 and you don't find us, we'll be there um, and just sort of wander around looking confused and sad until someone sort of calls you over. And will we have it next Saturday? Probably if we test negative. Okay. Maybe so, so once again, sign up for the newsletter and the WhatsApp group specifically. Um, WhatsApp group's a big one, and that's how you'll know. And people can say sadhu and goodbye and wish each other well. And it was really wonderful. Thank you all for joining in. And 
Uh, yeah, I wish everybody a, a great Dhammic rest of your weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be with all of you. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. That's negative. Everyone can see it. Be negative. Be positive. Be positive. That's negative.